dear friends it's my humble pleasure to welcome one and all again for another time of worship on the lord's day and this is our joy to again reach with the word of god to all you wherever you are and we pray to god today that god would bless our worship as we also worship along with the word by church may god bless you all shall we look to the lord in prayer let's pray Heavenly Father, as we come to the throne of your grace this morning, we want to thank you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts, Lord, for all that you mean to us this morning. As we worship you, Lord, on this day, help us to worship you in spirit and truth. As we join with your dear church all along with the word, we pray, Krishna God, that would bless your word by church once more in a new way. blessing us with the fresh anointing from above so that we may worship you lord glorify your name and may the world outside know that you are the living god take us into your hands oh lord empower us again with your living presence with us so that lord as we worship you as we sing praises to your name as we meditate upon your word oh lord let it reach us and bless us in every way lord be with us as we as we continue to worship you We ask all this in the blessed name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise to us that you are all going well, and we pray that God would bless the word that we are going to read this morning. Shall we open our Bible to the text that has been chosen for our morning meditation? The first scripture portion that has been chosen uh, comes to us from Saint Mark's Gospel, chapter eight. Verses from thirty-eight onwards, Saint Mark's Gospel, chapter eight, verses beginning from thirty-eight onwards. When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, "Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever..." loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul or what will a man give in exchange for his soul for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him the son of man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels we continue to read chapter 9 also verses beginning from 1 to 10 and he said to them assuredly i say to you that there are some standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of god present with power now after 6 days jesus took peter james and john and led them up on high mountain apart by themselves and he was transfigured before them his clothes became shining exceedingly white like snow such as no launder on earth can whiten them and elijah appeared to them with moses and they were talking with jesus then peter answered and said to jesus the by It is good for us to be here and let us make three tabernacles one for you one for Moses and one for Elijah because he did not know what to say for they were greatly afraid and a cloud came and overshadowed them and a voice came out of the cloud saying this is my beloved son hear him suddenly when they had looked around they saw no one any more but only jesus with themselves now as they came down from the mountain he commanded them that they should not tell no one the things they had seen till the son of man had risen from the dead so they kept his word to themselves and questioning what the rising from the dead meant The second scripture portion that has been chosen for this morning comes to us from Saint Paul's letter to 
Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 to 14. Second Timothy chapter 1, verses beginning from 8 to 14. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now revealed by appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Hold fast the portion, the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus, that good thing which was committed to you, keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Here in the lesson, may the good Lord add his blessings to the reading and understanding of his holy word. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Friends, as we prepare our hearts to hear the word of God, it's a time to worship the Lord with our opening hymn. And we are going to sing uh, our opening hymn today, hymn number 154, Have Thine Own Way, O Lord, Have Thine Own Way, hymn number 154. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer before we come to the word of God? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we open your word, O Lord, to meditate upon, we pray this morning that I would open our eyes and hearts also, so that, Lord, our hearts will be lightened with your living word of God. And as we take this, your heavenly manna for the week ahead, O Lord, we pray, gracious God, let your kingdom continue to grow in our hearts, O Lord. Let your kingdom come to grow in this world, O Lord, wherever the gospel is being preached this day. Let your kingdom come to grow in all around the churches, O Lord, as we venture to worship and adore you, Lord. Let your name be glorified, O Father. Thank you. Thank you, Master, for being with us. 
The Lord who said, I'll be with you even unto the ends of this world. Lord, we trust that you are with us. Lord, let this day a great blessing, O Lord, and particularly let when we sit in your holy presence. Be with us. In Jesus' precious and mighty, mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Friends, we have been meditating on the topic that said God of love and God of grace. That was the last Sunday. And as we continue to keep that theme as our main theme, I also have another subtitle for today's message. And it says, Closer walk with Jesus. Closer walk with Jesus. And with that challenging uh, title, I believe that God would help us to remember the word that he is going to speak to us this morning. As we move in this uh, word with our life of faith, as we continue to walk our spiritual journey in this life, friends, we are all filled with the challenges of this life, challenges of our life and health, challenges of our day-to-day -day work, office and trying to maintain and survive in this world but there is a difference while we live do we just live for survival or do we live with a purpose or do we live with a vision that God wants to fulfill in each one of our lives as children of God as servants of God the beautiful passage that we have read this morning again is going to remind us and challenge us that Jesus Christ challenged both the people and his disciples as we read in this mass gospel and he's telling something out of his heart and wanting them to do something about it wanting them to decide for themselves and this is how we see whenever the gospel is preached it is preached for decision it is preached for commitment and this is how on this day once again we are going to renew our commitment to the Lord when we want to walk closer with Jesus. Of course we know that many people that they followed Jesus and apart from his disciples all of them as they followed among them also there were few very few that that Jesus wanted them still closer with him still closer with him uh, comparatively and wanted to show them reveal them something that is of utter most important to his heart and this is the incident that Jesus wanted to tell or show his disciple what he is and what he is expecting and particularly we are talking about the incident of transfiguration when Jesus along with his few disciples decided and went up on the mountain along with Peter, James and John. Peter, James and John. What a privilege of a disciples, within disciples of Jesus Christ to have that closer and that really heavenly glimpse of Jesus Christ as he revealed upon them uh, at that point of time. All the three Gospels as they emphasize and give importance to this passage and, and recorded in all these three Gospels that tells itself that how important this incident in the life of Jesus and particularly in the life of those disciples it was. But before we before we venture or go into that stage or experience of Jesus revealing himself his heavenly heavenly uh, glory, what we what we are challenged here in the beginning of these few verses, we want to look there and then we'll go to the next passage. Here first of all, Jesus is throwing an open challenge to his people and disciples, saying that, whosoever desires to come after me. Friend, Jesus is not forcing you and me or anybody in, in all the generations and all the centuries. There's an open challenge to follow Jesus Christ. And only those who have that, that courage and boldness will say, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. All those who are fearful, afraid, and wanting to live with the pleasure of this world, they will not want to commit themselves to the Lord. And this is the history of the church and continues in our generation as well. Whoever desires to come up to me, friends, during this century, with all the ups and downs of our lives and our churches today, all the worldwide 
uh, overall situation today, in a kind of critical situation that we are living today, certainly there is a persecution. Certainly there is an opposition in one way or the other when we want to follow Jesus Christ. And it's not easy. That's what Jesus is telling. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. And this is how Jesus is asking us. As we want to follow him, he says, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. First of all, what we see here is Jesus is wanting to identify ourselves with him, with his, his, his cross as such, to, in following the will of God. And or else there, there is no, no way of following him unless and until we are ready to deny ourselves. And this morning, friends, if you really want to love the Lord, Jesus is again giving us that, that, that divine grace and calling, whosoever wants to follow me. Choice is yours. He is never forcing anybody. And then that is how Jesus walks. And this morning, first of all, we want to see here, when we are ready to take up the, our cross and deny ourselves and follow him, Jesus is telling, you should not be, you should not be ashamed of me. Friends, today, one of the reasons that we see why we do not want to take up the cross, why we do not want to, to deny ourselves and follow him for the simple reason, for the simple reason, man in his own sinfulness or selfishness, he wants to live in a comfortable life, in a comfortable zone, so to say, in a life of pleasure and even sin for that matter, where he wants to enjoy the world and at the same time believe God, believe and worship God of, of some nation without knowing what God is and what God is expecting of us. And here Jesus is telling verse 38 we are looking into, for whosoever, whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And here he comes to the ultimate climax of his, his mission into this world. He says, do not be ashamed of me. If you are ashamed of me and my word in this adulterous world, he is telling. He is describing this word as adulterous and sinful generation. Uh, what a remarkable analysis of Jesus Christ himself, our Lord. He describes the word. He describes the word saying there's this adulterous and sinful generation. And he comes here as the savior of the mankind to bring this adulterous and sinful word back to his kingdom, the kingdom of righteousness and light, kingdom of joy and peace, kingdom of salvation. And that was his purpose. That cannot be denied, that cannot be diluted at any cost or by any compromise. And therefore the clear cut, 100% of kind of commitment, Jesus is asking, whosoever wants to follow me, let him follow, let him deny, let him come after, after me. And therefore, he should not be ashamed of the gospel. He should not be ashamed of, uh, of uh, any persecution that, that would follow. And there he says, what? What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? And this is how, friends, today mankind is living for their own soul. Mankind is living for their own profit and for their own happiness and enjoyment. But the important part of the personality of mankind is the soul. Soul which continues to live. It never dies. Jesus said, this body will die one day, it will go back to earth and then what happens? The soul is important, it is never perished as such. But then he says, what will happen to that soul? If you gain the whole world, this whole world that you gain, no matter what riches, what name and fame you get, but if you have lost your soul, the very core of your personality that God has created, where it will go? What will be the prophet? And what he can give in exchange of his soul, the whole world's riches cannot give in exchange of your soul. That is so precious. That is so precious. And Jesus is simply emphasizing on the fact that 
What will a man give in exchange for his soul? Exchange for his soul. Here we are struggling to survive by hook or crook. If it is so, it's very unfortunate. But if you are surviving for Christ and for His goal, for His purposes, for His mission, there is a winning into life. There is a, not only joy and peace, but there is a purpose, God's purpose, fulfilling, being fulfilled there in you and me. And that's why Jesus' call comes afresh and should remind us when Jesus called us first, when we started our spiritual journey long many years back, and then what was that our life at that point of time? What is our life after 10 years, 20, 30, 40, and 50 years today? Are we in that in that close walk with Jesus Christ? And if not, it is the calling today that Christ is calling you and me. Come back to his fold, to a core group of his disciples. Not just disciples, but the core group. John, James, and Peter, we see Jesus had to pick up them and show them something, a greater level of spiritual life, greater revelation. Uh, level of his his uh, spiritual realm and his nature and his very revelation. What a privilege, friends. And today in our generation, what we want to see? We want to just read few verses from here and there and just believe and forget about it. No, Jesus is definitely with purpose. He's calling, come and follow me, denying yourself. Friends, denying yourself means denying the pleasure. Denying the, 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 the so-called safe zone or the, 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 the comfort zone as we call it. Unless and until we are, we are ready, unless and until we are ready to decide to come out of our comfort zone, we will not be able to follow Jesus Christ, we will not be his true witnesses, effective witnesses. And thereby we see here in our comfort zone, we want to protect ourselves. We want to have the riches of this world in our comfort zone. We want to have our own way without thinking about our soul. And Jesus is questioning what will happen to your soul. How long you are going to live in this world? It is numbered. It is numbered for you and me and for everyone else. And in that scenario, what is that you are going to gain the whole world? And what is that you are going to take along with you after you leave this world? After your body it returns to earth as it is and your soul remains there. Your soul remains there and what you can give in exchange of your soul. It is on the precious blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on the cross for you and me, for the whole mankind. You need to accept it. You need to embrace and have it and say, Lord, I need you. The very price of my soul. Only that precious blood is is the, the true price of the of the soul of every mankind, every person in this world. Whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. Friends, today we see that we do not want to come out of our comfort zone for the simple reason we are ashamed of Jesus Christ. We are afraid of Jesus Christ to glorify his name, to testify his name for some fear of some persecution coming from some, some corner. Yes, it could come from within the church, outside the church. It can come from any enemy and that's there. And in that, in that context, in that situation, Jesus is calling you to take up the cross. Jesus is calling not to be ashamed of me. And he says, whoever is ashamed of me, because of this, your comfort zone, because of this sinful pleasure that you are in, and then if you do not want to, to, to really accept my word, and if you are ashamed of me and my word, he says, ashamed of me and my words. And the next is a warning. And he says, in this adulterous generation, sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with his holy angel. Friends, that's a serious warning to all of us. And that's what he says. If you are afraid, if you are ashamed of my word and, and, and myself, I will be ashamed of you. I will be ashamed of you when the Son of Man comes in his glory, with glory of the father with his angels. What a serious warning this morning. Friends, today, that Lord is calling us to embrace and love him and not be ashamed of him. Not be afraid of this coming persecution in one way or the other. Yes, when we decide to follow Jesus Christ, there is no scope for us to live 
or expect or desire anything of this worldly pleasure and the world as Jesus describes here is adulterous and sinful generation. Now the question is kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. Are we or we would like to continue to be the part of this adulterous and sinful generation or we want to come out of that adulterous and sinful generation stand with Jesus and saying that Lord we want you. Lord accept me as sinner and that's how Jesus is looking forward for, for accepting his dear children to come and surrender and give the prize for their soul. The precious blood that he shed from the cross that we call the salvation that Jesus has revealed. God has revealed in his own time. What are you ashamed of today? Are you ashamed of your, your sinful ways that you want to live in this world? Or are you ashamed of Jesus Christ? The choice is yours. The second thing we want to see here is as Jesus uh, is wanting to, to speak to us this morning and here we see Jesus' wonderful uh, experience that he wanted to give to his disciples as we want to walk closer with the Lord. What is it Jesus is expecting? He picks up John, Peter, John and Peter and James and that's how he takes them, three of them on a mountain all alone and as they walk and they, they come to a point of place there Jesus is transfigured. He has changed his, his, his humanity so to say and shown to them what Jesus is really as the son of God in heavenly realm. And the Bible is very clear. He says, as Jesus was transformed there completely, it says in verse 3, Mark chapter 9, verse 3, his clothes became shining, exceedingly white like snow, such as no laundry on earth can whiten them. Jesus was transfigured before them. Friends, let us keep this in mind. Jesus, the Son of God, is the Savior of the mankind. He has come God in flesh in this world. And if you deny him, there he's, he shows what he is in his, in his heavenly realm. And he's saying, I will come back. And if you are ashamed of me of this world, I will be ashamed of you. And this is what he wanted to teach this particular, these three disciples very close to his heart, who have accepted him and followed him. And Jesus wanted to teach them something exceedingly great. And on that one mountain at the point, and point of time, we also read Elijah appeared to them with Moses and they were talking with Jesus, Elijah and Moses. Elijah representing the prophetic house of God and Moses here, the giver of law in the Old Testament. And these two, along with Jesus, they are talking, talking about the coming salvation for the mankind that Jesus was going to offer on the cross and in his resurrection. And this is how Jesus wanted to show I am the God of living people and the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and he's a God of here we see Moses and Elijah being alive there talking with Jesus. What a revelation friends. We are serving the living God. He's not a dead God. He's talking to us this morning. He's wanting to answer our prayers this morning and here the voice comes from heaven and as they were there the voice from the cloud comes there and the cloud came and overshadowed them and the voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. This is my beloved son, hear him. Friends, today whom do we hear? What do we hear? And whom do we follow is the question. Here, this is my beloved son, hear him. And after all, Jesus Disciples, as they saw her, nobody was all her. What a vision. And Jesus promptly tells them as they came down. He commanded them that they should not tell anyone about this, what revelation that they have seen, until Son of Man had risen from the dead. And Jesus' disciple, still wondering, what is, what is Jesus talking about? dying and rising from the dead. They are still wondering. They could not understand what he was telling. And friends, this is something this brings to us that Jesus wanted to give this specific vision to this particular disciples, those who really loved Jesus uh, by all their 
by all, by all ways. And when we see that Jesus is giving this wonderful revelation of himself and showing what Jesus is in real, in, in, in heavenly realm, and no, no wonder his disciples must have cherished that dream, cherished that particular revelation that Jesus gave all throughout their life. No wonder they followed him, even unto death, even unto as they were martyred, almost all of the disciples and friends. That is the calling. That is the calling of our master and savior. That is the calling every generation to coming to all mankind. In our generation, have you heard Jesus Christ calling you? Have you heard Jesus Christ calling you to take a cross and follow him? Yes, to what extent? To what extent? And here Jesus is telling, who is ashamed of me and my word in this adulterous and sinful generation, I will be ashamed of them. Friends, here Jesus is wanting to give us more and more of his revelation. And particularly during these days that we are living in a, in a particular kind of, uh, you know, we do not know what's the world bringing us tomorrow. We do not know how long we are going to live in this world tomorrow. And in that scenario, friends, we cannot take the calling and the mission of Jesus Christ lightly. Jesus is wanting to give his revelation. Christian revelation is always a growing revelation. Growing revelation. And I'm sure we as God's people in the church and God's servant, we want his growing revelation. Growing revelation will only come with our growing obedience and growing walk with Jesus Christ closer and closer. You will agree with me. Otherwise, no. If you're not able to take one first step and the second, the fourth and fifth, God can never be able to help us to reach on the, on the level of that particular step that he wants to take unless and until we qualify step by step walking with Jesus in our lifetime. Jesus is calling us to walk closer, walk still closer. Ready for his, his revelation? Wait, waiting for his revelation? walking with him, and Jesus is ready to give his revelation. Now coming to the last point here, we want to see the example that the disciples followed throughout their life, and the witness, witness of the disciples. Now we are talking about St. Paul. St. Paul who had Christ that almost the identical vision when he was on a wrong path to persecute Christ, the Church of Christ. At that point of time, we read in the book of Acts, where Jesus appears him and tells him and calls him for the great mission. We are coming into Second Timothy in chapter one, and here Saint Paul is encouraging young Pastor Timothy how to how to move into this world and mission of Christ and what it means to to follow Jesus Christ. St. Paul is telling Timothy in verse 8, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8, he says, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, nor of me. Friends, again, St. Paul is reminding us here that do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me. How important it is. We are ashamed of Jesus Christ for some or the other reason. And he said, you should not. And he also adds that, nor of me, nor of me. Friends, how, how important it is today to identify yourself and not to be ashamed of a person who is persecuted for Christ, who is going to be persecuted for Christ, who is walking with Christ, who is denying himself and walking and following Christ. Can you identify yourself and not be ashamed of such person, such church, such believers? who wants to take up a stand for Christ and walk for the Lord and follow him. He says, do not be ashamed. Do not be ashamed of our Lord Jesus Christ, nor of me. Friends, today, coming to this point here, we see when St. Paul is telling, not be ashamed of me. How do we understand this? Here we see the, the, the issue of leadership, the issue of uh, a classic example or uh, a testimony of a disciples, a leader 
whom we are expected to follow. There is a leader in front of us and we want to follow him because he follows the master. And St. Paul rightly saying, not of me, I am in prison. And here again the question comes, people are afraid of suffering or persecution. And probably when St. Paul is put in prison, and if you go to visit such prisoner, it is quite possible that either the Jews or the Romans, anybody can again put you also in prison along with Paul as he was there because, because of some reason water. And this is how our identification with the Lord will also will bring our identification with suffering Christ, with suffering church, with suffering disciples of Jesus Christ. Are you ready for that? And do not be ashamed of me also, St. Paul tells here. I am a prisoner. Friends, today God is calling us from that our safe and, and comfortable soul and unlisten until we are ready to break it out. Break it out and say, Lord, I want to come. After all, how many years I am going to be in this world. My soul is more precious than anything else in this, in this world. And he's telling, but also share with me the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Also, not only identify with me, but also be ready to suffer with me for the gospel according to the power of God. Wonderful testimony. And I love this text. He said, he reminds him, uh, particularly the Timothy here, saying that he has saved us. He has saved us. And not only saved us, he has called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. And this is how, and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Friends, uh, very quickly we want to see here, St. Paul is talking Jesus has called us, saved us, and he has called us with holy calling. The issue in our churches today we are facing is uh, leadership. Leadership. People, the, the congregation, the world wants to see the disciple of Jesus Christ. You will agree with me? The world wants to, the church wants to see a person who follows the Lord so that they could also follow along with him the Lord of life. The problem today is if as a leadership in the church, no matter what level you are, when you are saved, when you are called with a holy calling according to his purposes, according to God's grace that has been given, if you are following, your congregation will follow. The world will follow the Lord Jesus Christ if you are following Jesus Christ. And that is the point here. And here we see that it's a holy calling. We need our example before our eyes who is following the law, who is, who is the example of a, of a, a disciples of Jesus Christ, whom we can imitate. As St. Paul tells as well, imitate me because I imitated the Lord of life. Friends, today is a challenge for you and me, both as believers and as the minister of the gospel. How much people will follow you? And how much they should follow you? And what for if they follow you? They will follow you because you are saved in the first place. And because you have been called with a holy calling. God is a holy God. The God of holy uh, holiness that he has. He will not change according to the changing seasons of this world. According to the changing culture of the world. According to the changing ethics and uh, morality. According to the values of every new generation. He will not change. He is a God, Almighty God, the Holy God. His character remains the same for ages together. And Jesus said, if you are afraid, if you are ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you. Oh, that's a high calling. That's a holy calling. And here we are asked to identify with Jesus by taking our own cross and denying following the Lord. And here we are also asked and and uh, uh, exhorted here, Paul telling to Timothy, do not be ashamed of me, but be with me, be with me, share with me in the sufferings of the gospel according to the power of God. This gospel has the power of God. When we are in prison, when we are denied ourselves, when we are walking 
it is the power of god of salvation it is the power of god working in us is the power of god's grace working in us not of our good works not of our own special quality that's what she said paul is emphasizing us and god has chosen us accordingly and friends this morning here jesus christ is always more challenging us and asking us to follow him and finally when we come to the close of this particular para saint paul is telling i am appointed preacher i am appointed apostle and i am teacher of the gentiles and for this reason i am suffering i am suffering these things nevertheless i am not ashamed i am not ashamed here what we are looking is saint paul is telling i have been saved i have been called with holy calling i have been appointed as as disciples and apostles i have been appointed as as a preacher and teacher of the of gentiles and therefore for this reason i also suffer these things friends so paul at this point of time is in prison while he's writing this couple of uh, letters that we see from right from sitting in the prison cell he says i am a i am a uh, prisoner of jesus christ and right away he's saying uh, in this particular uh, para that we just read he says therefore i am suffering unless and until friends we we identify ourselves as for saint paul paul says i have i have been crucified with lord jesus christ crucified to this world not that i live but christ liveth in me may I, unless and until we we identify with, with the lord jesus christ who was crucified and we are crucified with him then and then only we can also identify ourselves with the risen lord jesus christ after we stop all this and until we die with jesus christ there cannot be resurrection there cannot be resurrection and friends today we all want the resurrection blessing we all want the the, the salvation blessing without going to the cross without taking up the cross without following the lord we are ashamed of him for some reason or the other jesus says you are ashamed of me you are ashamed of me and saint paul is telling us here i am suffering because of the gospel i have been appointed but i, I here he says very clearly but then how we were he is telling as we read in this word i for this reason i suffer these things nevertheless i am not ashamed for i know whom i have believed and i'm persuaded that he is able to keep what i have committed to him until that day until that day i'm i have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what i have committed to him friends today we have example we have modern so to say said paul before us and we need modern in our generation i mean the living model of disciple of jesus christ who is following him so that the world will follow the disciples and ultimately the lord of of salvation king jesus christ so paul prays in another text he says i want to know the power of his suffering the fellowship of the suffering of jesus christ i want to know the power of the suffering of the jesus christ and also i want to know the power of his resurrection both things go hand in hand it's a beautiful text friends today what are we looking for may god bless may god bless you as you follow the lord jesus christ as you follow saint paul and the apostles that god has given us in the text in our bible today and maybe have many more such peter john and james such many more disciples like paul and others will you be one of them god is call, calling you and me to be his apostle and disciple to be his preacher of his righteousness like saint paul said i am appointed with holy calling your calling is not just ordinary your soul is not just ordinary it's precious in the sight of god as you take the word of god and meditate upon it may god bless you may god help you to continue to grow in his grace his grace will help us to commit what we have committed to him 
uh, till the last moment of our life in this world and he will take care of us. He is able to keep what we have committed to him. God bless you. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Let's pray. Glory, glory, Sir, Holy Father, as we come to the throne of your grace, as we continue to meditate upon your word of grace, God, this day. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us, gracious God. Let your word continue to live in our hearts and minds and soul, Lord, so that, Lord, we grow into a strong tree and fruitful tree in our lives, Lord. Where do we stand, Lord, after 20, 40, 60 years of our life of believer and minister? How fruitful we are, O oh gracious God. Give us that grace, Lord, to enlighten us, open our eyes and minds. Bless everyone, bless every congregation member, O oh Lord. Bless all those listeners, O oh Lord, those who are meditating along with us, O oh Lord, and worshiping with us. Bless them abundantly, O oh Lord. Lord, the challenge is coming from you, O gracious God. The challenge is to come and follow you, O gracious God, and walk in your steps, so that we are always ready to open our eyes and show us greater things than these, as you say. Oh, glorious vision that our eyes are waiting to see, O Lord. Oh, God, fill us, Lord, with your spirit of righteousness. Make us more hungry and thirsty of your righteousness, Lord, Day by day, so that Lord will be filled more and more and more. Be with us this day, Lord. Bless this week as we move ahead, Lord, in this new month of number. Bless all our days. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, we are singing our concluding hymn. Hymn number 305. Onward Christian soldier, and thereafter we will join in the Lord's table. And may the Lord bless the Lord's table today for all of us as we partake it. And may you have that His grace and peace, the joy of salvation, plenty to grow in your life. We'll sing hymn number in this time, three, not five. Onward Christian soldiers.
friends, may I request you to keep the elements ready with you as we read the portion here and when we take the communion, we will take in energy and we will take it together. Let us pray. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time must previously have committed. By thought, word and deed against your divine majesty, we do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to you, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord, it is meet and right so to do. It is very meet right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we Lord and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Just as I am without one plea, but that your blood was shed for me, and that the best may come to God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did give you his only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made death by the one offering of himself, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these your gifts of bread and wine that we receive them according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his passion, death and resurrection may be particles of the divine nature through him who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for forgiveness of sins. Do this often as you shall drink it and remembrance of me. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to partake of this sacrament of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we may walk in newness of life, may grow into his likeness, and may 
ever more dwell in him and he in us. I request your members to be ready with your elements. I will take the bread and wine at this time. Jesus said, this is my body given for you. Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, Jesus took the cup and said, drink you all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as of, as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, your humble servant, desire your fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this of sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto you. Humbly beseeching you that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father Almighty, word without end. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord. As the silver of this table, O Lord, bless it, Lord, for all your dear children. And pray, gracious God, let the blessings of this day will continue to be with us throughout this month, O Lord. Bless our congregation, every young and old ones, Lord, who bring to the feet of your cross, O Lord. I pray, Krishna, God, let your risen presence be with every member of our church today during this month. Continue to prepare us, Lord, for your glorious ministry in the days to come. I pray, Krishna, God, grant us that your greater revelation, greater joy and peace, Lord, while we walk with you, Lord, denying ourselves. Thank you, Lord, this word that has come to us this morning. Do not be ashamed of me as well, said Paul says. Christ, he said, whoever is ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of him when I come back to the heavenly angels. Gracious God, help us to understand the cost of our soul, Lord. Be with us, Lord, as we move on to this word with your word of assurance that I know whom I have believed, as St. Paul could say. And he is there to take care of me for what I have committed to him until that day. Bless us, Lord, today as we move on. Be with us. For we ask all the same, the most blessed and mighty name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray while we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with all of you, with all our dear ones and loved ones, with all God's people, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.